Hi, I'm Mitchell with Milano Music, and this is the tuba. Today we're going to talk about how to take it out of the case, put it together, hold it, and make our first note. The first step is taking it out of the case. What you may notice with our rentals is we have these nifty little tags. When you set the case down to open it, you always want the tag on top. First we have to open all of the latches. Check all around. With tubas, it can go all the way around. Next, we want to pick up our tuba. The most important thing about grabbing tubas is to reach for thicker, bigger tubes. We don't want to grab little pipes because that can't support the weight of the tuba. So I'm going to reach in here and grab a couple of big ones and set it down gently on its bell. When your tuba is on the ground, if it's on the bell, you always want to set it against something. That way we don't risk your tuba rocking away. When we bring it up onto our lap, one of the most important steps is to not roll the tuba. The bell is flat and we want it to remain flat. So the very beginning, we have to lift it off the ground just a little bit, and then you roll it up onto your leg. You might have a tuba with the valves on top instead of in the front. In that case, the process is the same, but on the other side. We lift it just off the ground, and then roll it onto our lap. The parts of the tuba are very similar to the euphonium. We start with a lead pipe. The lead pipe starts with a mouthpiece receiver, where we put our mouthpiece. The lead pipe goes into our valves. From there, we have a different tuning slide for each valve and a main tuning slide. It's very important that you figure out which tuning slide is for the main one and which ones are for the valves. After we get through the valves, you may notice that there's a lot more tubing to go. The tuba is the lowest member of the brass family and as such is also the longest. All of this tubing comes to an end at the bell of the tuba where your sound comes out, and as you may notice, is very large. The embouchure of the tuba is particularly open. Especially if you've come from another brass instrument, you may notice that everything feels so much more open than you're used to. The most important parts of the tuba embouchure are three things. That the corners of your mouth are firm, that your lips are free to vibrate, and that the aperture where the air comes out, is nice and open. One way that we can form a brass embouchure is by saying the letter M and ending with PA, such as M PO. When you go to the PA, ensure that the corners of your mouth stay in the same place as when you said M. We add the PA for two reasons. To ensure that we have an open aperture, as well as to prevent our lips from rolling in when we say the M. M. They can't very well vibrate if you do that. Next we have our mouthpiece. The mouthpiece consists of a rim, a cup, and a shank. The shank of the mouthpiece is what goes into the receiver of the tuba. We want approximately a 50-50 split on the placement of the mouthpiece. You may find more success with placing slightly more on top. The upper lip is largely the lip that vibrates in the mouthpiece. Let's practice together forming our embouchure and setting the mouthpiece on our lips. Mm po. One more time. Mm po. Once we've done that a couple times, Go ahead and blow air through the mouthpiece. Mm, po. If all you hear is the whooshing of air, that's good. Now, slowly think about speeding the air up just a little bit and tightening that aperture. Think about a drawstring bag where it gets tighter from all sides as you tighten the bag, as opposed to flattening out. 
we want a very round aperture when we play the tuba. And one more. You may find that the tuba mouthpiece can be particularly difficult to get a buzz on at first. That's okay. If you take your pinky and place it over the end of the shank very carefully, you add just a little bit of resistance. This can make it easier to get a buzz at first, but be careful to not push the mouthpiece into your face. Take your mouthpiece. Put the shank of the mouthpiece into the receiver of the tuba. Give it just a little turn. When we bring it up onto our lap, remember, a little lift and then roll. Once the tuba is on your lap, we have to figure out how to hold it. With the tuba, take your right hand and find your valves. It may be in a different place, and I'll show you later. With this one, one, two, three, four. And our thumb rests in the thumb ring. With your left hand, grab around the top bow of the tuba. This both opens your chest and gives you quick access to the valve slides if you need to tune the tuba on the fly. If your tuba has the valves on top, the process is the same. Take your mouthpiece, put the shank into the receiver of the tuba, Lift it just off the ground, grab by big tubes, roll it up onto your lap. Our right hand we want on the valves, one, two, three, or four if you have four valves. And take your left arm and imagine that you're giving the tuba a big hug. We want the tuba and the mouthpiece to come right to us without us having to change too much. If you find that the tuba is too low for you, you can set it on something. I like to use a yoga block. If the tuba is too tall for you, you could always try sitting on a large book. Bring the mouthpiece of the tuba and the tuba itself to you. Don't go to it. Playing the tuba requires a lot of air, so we want to make sure that before we play, we take a deep breath. similar to when you yawn. Bring the tuba to yourself. Mm pa. Take a nice deep breath. If you didn't get a note right away, there are a couple things that might have happened. Make sure that there's a nice da articulation as if you're saying the letter D. If you don't, and you just try to play with air, the sound might not immediately speak. At first, many of us tend to be too tight when we play the tuba, and our first note could sound something more like Relax. Remember, m mm, pa, m mm, pa. If that was the sound you got, that's the low B flat below the staff. If you move your air just a little bit faster. That's the F right below the staff. And faster still. That's the B flat in the staff. With the tuba, there are a lot of different turns where condensation can gather as you play. The warm air that you put into the tuba quickly cools and gathers into spit. 
you probably have at least one spit valve on your main tuning slide. And before you put the tuba away, make sure to empty it. If you find that you still have a gurgling sound, even after you've emptied the spit valves, it could be in the valve slides themselves. With these, you want to be very careful. If I have spit in my first valve slide, I take the tuba, I press the first valve, you slowly remove the slide, and let it empty. If the spit is in a different valve, you follow the same process with pressing that valve down, removing the slide carefully, and emptying the spit from it. If when you're done playing the tuba, you have a safe place to leave it on its bell resting against something, you can do that. But when it's time to put it in the case, step one, remember our nifty tag on the top. All of the latches are undone, and we open the case. With our mouthpiece, there should be a little spot in the case to put it. Set it to rest and close it. Pick up the tuba by the biggest tube that you can grab and carefully set it into the case. It should be next to impossible to set it in the, into the case wrong. Once our tuba is safely in the case, Close it, and make sure to do all of the latches. You may have noticed that this tuba case has wheels. If we want to move with our tuba and it has wheels, all you have to do is set it up, grab it by the handle, and we're good to go. If you have any questions, please call us at 480-827-1111.